All right. Take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Amin, and I'm here to show you how you can use machine learning techniques in your video game projects. Uh, machine learning is a very interesting and very hot topic these days, so uh, it can be very good to be able to use these in your game projects. So uh, for this, I've chosen one of the games that I worked on uh, last year. It is a free-to-play online mobile game uh, in which you can uh, take some free kicks and it, it's a two-player game so uh, each player takes some free kicks and the player who scores uh, more goals wins the game so uh, as simple as that so uh, what I want to do right now is that I want to uh, write an NPC for this game and by NPC I mean an agent or a AI, by, AI bot um, who can make some shots uh, instead of players. So uh, that's right that I said it's a free-to-play game so we, uh, normally we expect uh, humans to play this game but uh, in free-to-play games you actually need to have AI bots because sometimes for example there are not enough online players so you need to have some uh, bots to play instead of uh, humans so you don't lo lose your player base and there are actually a lot more reasons. For example, sometimes uh, you want some players to lose, uh, no matter what. So you want, so you just create a very strong bot and you uh, place that in uh, in front of your in your player, and he loses the game. So that's what I want to do. As you can see, I have uh, written the physics of the ball, and I have uh, some AI for the goalkeeper. It's actually a very strong AI, so he catches uh, uh, the the ball very good, and. Uh, there is some AI that sets the defense wall and, uh, uh, and uh, sets the position of the ball randomly. So uh, the AI should be able to make some shots in every possible situation. So um, for that, I just uh, created a, a very simple grid. And this grid determines uh, where my AI wants to shoot. Okay? Because in my physics, I just need to determine the end position of the ball, and it will just uh, uh, determine the amount of force and the angle that uh, it needs to be applied to the ball in order to uh, make the ball go to that position. So uh, I, uh, I've written a simple AI uh, which um, in this act function. So in this act function, I would say that, okay, you are in this current state uh, and, I want to, and I want you to uh, return uh, an index to one of these rectangles. And my AI right now just creates a random shoot. It just uh, it creates a random number in the range zero to the number of these targets that I have here. I have 66 targets, so it's going to generate an index between 0 and 65. So if I play the game right now and I press this start button here, it just creates some random shots. So I don't need to do anything. It will just keep going, uh, and it will just create some shots. And as you can see, it's not doing good because it's just creating random shots. Uh, okay, so I want to do uh, some machine learning to, to make this agent to learn to uh, uh, take good shoots here. Okay, so for that I'm just going to go uh, to use uh, the concept of reinforcement learning in which we have an agent and we have an environment. So our agent is our shooter right now and our football field is our environment. The agent takes some actions and uh, gets the reward and it, ju it will just keep, going, uh, it will just keep uh, going until it learns how to um, act optimally in the environment. So it's a very simple concept and that's what we humans actually do in real life. So uh, in this setting I will just... Uh, uh, I, I put another function here which is observe. This observe is called at the end of each, uh, each shoot. So it tells us uh, what was the state, what was the place that I shot, and uh, whether I, I was able to make the goal or not. Okay? So I will just uh, create a very simple reward. And the reward uh, is going to be 1 if I'm, I'm able to score a goal and 0 otherwise. Okay? So I'm going to use this simple reward function. Uh, and uh, uh, for my reinforcement learning, I'm going to use some algorithm called Q-learning, which is a very simple and very famous algorithm, actually. Uh, it's very simple. We have a Q function, and this Q function tells us uh, what is the value of taking some action in the, in the current state. Okay, so I have a Q function that will tell me, okay, this is the, the value of this rectangle is minus 1, and the value of this one is plus 1 something like that. Okay, so I will need some function that will just uh, give a score to each one of these rectangles. And for these, uh, I'm going to use a very uh, famous machine learning toolbox, uh, which is called a neural network. And you can easily find the implementations of neural networks, and I'm just using one of them that I found before. And 
I just uh, create my queue function uh, using this neural network class, and I will say, okay, this is my neural network. And for a neural network, we'll just need to define uh, the number of inputs and outputs that your function have. And there are some hidden, so you don't need to know about that, about that right now. I have uh, 14 inputs because I am giving this the position of the ball of the, uh, and def defenders and the goalkeeper. So this is a, a floating point array of uh, 14 numbers. Um, so I will just say, okay, you, you need 14 inputs and you will need give me 66 outputs because I have 66 rectangles over here. And in my act function, instead of uh, generating a random integer, I will uh, just say my Q function to calculate its uh, output using the S state as its input. And I will uh, just uh, look at the function here. As you can see, it's generating a list of floats. So. I will just say, okay, a list of float called output will be the output of my neural network. And now I will just go uh, through the output and find the rectangle that has the highest score. So max index is zero and float max is output zero. So I assume that the first rectangle is the highest score. Now I go over the rest of the uh, rectangles and I will write a simple if output i is greater than max I will set max index to be i and max to be output i and when this loop is over I have the um, index of the best rectangle in the max index so I will just say that okay return max index so instead of uh, creating a random uh, action, I'm just creating the, I'm just find, finding the best rectangle that the neural network tells me. And now if we play the, the game, okay. Now it's shooting uh, somewhere, but it's shooting always uh, to this place. I will explain why. Uh, we will fix that in a moment. Just let's, uh, let's do something fun. Uh, in, uh, when you're doing machine learning, it's very good to see uh, what uh, your machine learning algorithm is doing. So we want to visualize uh, the output of neural network on this rectangle. So I will just change the color of these rectangles here. And for that, I have uh, each one of these rectangles has a component called image. And you can just change the color. So I will just use this for visualizing the output of my network. So I will write uh, another four. And I will define a score ratio to be output i minus mean divided by max minus mean. So this S score ratio, oh, I will need the minimum value. So let's just define mean to be output zero. And I will just say if output i is less than mean, mean is output i. So after this loop, I have the minimum value too. I don't need the index of minimum value, I just need the minimum score. And I will just say that uh, targets i, which is the i uh, rectangle in this grid, that get component image dot color to be new color, which is one minus score ratio ratio zero and this. I'm not changing the blue channel, I'm just, uh, I'm just making this more green if, it's, if it has a more a score and uh, lower red if it's, uh, so the worst rectangle would be red and the best one would be green. So here, yes, this should work. Let's just start. So at the first, the neural network is uh, initialized randomly, so it doesn't know actually what it's uh, thinking, so it's just returning random values. So if I start, you will see that the, ra the colors are actually random. So uh, because it's just at the beginning of training, the neural network doesn't know anything, so we have to train it. So the, the training is that uh, after I take some action, uh, I will get a reward. I will tell the neural network that, okay, this, is what, this was my state, and you get, told me to pick this action. I picked it, and I got this reward. So you have to, pick, uh, you have to update your output if it's needed. So at the observe function, I will just tell to my queue function to train itself using the state. 
and the action that I got and the reward. So uh, actually a lot of libraries just give you that uh, with this just simple function. You will just uh, give this information to a neural network and it will update itself. So after some point it will just learn what are the true values of each of the rectangles. Okay? Uh, but uh, as I told you before, it's just uh, right now it's just shooting to some specific uh, rectangle. Let's fix that too, and I guess uh, that would be almost it. Uh, and for that, I'm using a, a simple concept called exploration in reinforcement learning. In, in, reinfor in exploration, we say that okay, we, we have a uh, robot, and it, uh, for example, it has two choices to go to. A, it has to pick a restaurant, and it usually goes to this left restaurant over here. But there is a new restaurant on the right, uh, so you have to give this new restaurant um, some chances. You know, maybe that's a better restaurant, maybe not. But you have to try all different possibilities to um, to find the best strategy. So uh, people, I will just add this with a very simple method actually. Implementing exploration in machine learning is very simple. I will just uh, define a variable called epsilon, which is one. This is the probability of taking a random action. So if it's one, I will just pick a random action with probability 100%. So after I find my um, max index, uh, about, uh, after I found my, the output of my neural network, I will just say that, okay, I will uh, create a random variable between 0 and 1. And I will write this. Uh, if prop is less than epsilon, I will return a random action, just like this. And otherwise, I will just, uh, just return the maximum index. So at the beginning, epsilon is 1. So the probability, which is between 0 and 1, will, will be less than epsilon. So it will just create random action at the beginning. But after some time, I want to reduce the value of epsilon. So after each uh, observing each uh, experience, I will just uh, reduce this by a very small value, say 0 0.0001. So with this, after 10,000 shots, the epsilon would be zero. So after when it's zero, this if, this if will, will never be executed again. So I will always return the uh, maximum index as the output of my uh, act function. So here, if I just hit play, Okay, as you can see, it's taking random actions right now, so uh, it's not just sticking to one rectangle. And if I just speed up the process a little, let's see what happens. Okay, after some time, you, you, you can see that the co these colors are actually uh, changing. Uh, it's not changing that much at the beginning, but after some time, you will see this. And uh, after some time, it will uh, know that, okay, the, outside the goal is not a good place, so the, these boxes will uh, turn into red, and the boxes inside the goal will uh, turn green. And after some time, it will actually find the best rectangles to shoot. So it's going to take a while to train, so I'm not going to uh, make you watch that all the, all the time. So let's jump and see the final output. Okay, I let it train for like uh, eight hours, I think. And uh, you can actually uh, save uh, a neural network very easily. A neural network is just um, actually a, just an array of floating point numbers. So you can just save it into a text file and you can load it. And I did that. And uh, if, if you just load this neural network after 10,000 shots, you can see that it, it can score 50% of the time. So. As you can see, it has learned uh, uh, what is the best place to shoot. So uh, apparently my goalkeeper is weak on these points, so uh, it's trying to score the goal using that place. And that's actually 50% is a great ratio because I let my friends play this game and they could only score like 25% of the time. So, uh, so this is great. And uh, just one more thing, uh, uh, one might say that, okay, this is very strong. I, I don't want such a strong NPC in my game. And that's right, you usually don't. Uh, you can actually easily manipulate this agent after the training is done. You can just say, okay, rank the rectangles for me and I will just uh, pick the second best rectangle instead of the first one. Uh, we can just take a random action once in a while 
and you can easily manipulate the agent um, however you want. But some, at some point, you m might want to actually uh, just lose some, uh, make some player lose. So you, you will just say, okay, uh, play as, as, good, as good as you can and just win the game. And uh, yes, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.